listen to the JT Sports Podcast on all podcasting platforms and leave a five-star review. Michigan blew out Penn State 41-17. to Now, this game wasn't a full beatdown. Penn State did actually manage to keep this game close up until the third quarter. Late in the second quarter, they had a big pit six on J.J. McCarthy, which gave them a small 14-13 to lead. But right after that, in the closing seconds before halftime, Michigan drove down the field, got three points, and went into halftime with a 16-14 to lead. And then in the third quarter, that's when Michigan took this game by the throat. Donovan Edwards, Blake Corum, they've been unstoppable all year, and they were once again unstoppable in this game. Donovan Edwards went for a 67-yard touchdown run, right? And then right after that, Blake Corum said, you know what? I can do just as good. And he went for a 61-yard touchdown run. And this was like back-to-back. And I was just saying, wow. Penn State's defense just has no answers for Michigan's offense. Michigan had over 500 yards of total offense. The majority of that yardage came on the ground. It was unbelievable. Donovan Edwards, 16 carries for 173 rushing yards. He had two touchdowns. He was averaging 10.8 yards per carry. Blake Corum. Had 28 carries, 466 rushing yards, 5.9 yards per pop, and two touchdowns himself. I mean, this Michigan rushing attack is the best in college football, not even a debate. And when you look at their ball control offense, if you get down against Michigan, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because the way they can take time off the clock is just it's just really easy to them. There was one drive that they had in the fourth quarter that was nearly 10 minutes. Penn State only had the ball for 18 minutes and four seconds in this matchup. Michigan held the ball for 41 minutes and 56 seconds. And then... When you look at Penn State's offense going into this game, I went with Michigan because I didn't think that Penn State had enough firepower on offense to push Michigan defensively. When you go back to the Maryland game a couple of weeks into the season, Maryland actually gave Michigan a really tough game. You want to know why? Because Maryland had... A good offensive line. They had several NFL caliber wide receivers. They had Talia Tagovailoa, one of, if not the top three best quarterbacks in the Big Ten right now. And Penn State had Sean Clifford. And Sean Clifford isn't a bad quarterback. As a matter of fact, he's a solid quarterback. But when you're trying to beat Michigan... Ohio State, with what they are now, sometimes you're going to have to be put in situations where you need your quarterback to keep pace and make big throws. And you see, Sean Clifford wasn't bad in this game. But there were some tough throws that Penn State needed him to make that he couldn't make. And it's not a knock on him that he couldn't make those throws. They were tough throws. But... They were throws that if you had a Quinn Ewers or Bryce Young level quarterback at the helm, those throws would have been made. And those throws, if they would have been made, they could have changed or altered the outcome of this game. Penn State's offense didn't do anything on the ground. Nick Singleton was a big talking point heading into this matchup. What was he going to do? He's been pretty good so far for Penn State into his young career. Well, he only had six carries for 19 rushing yards. So the run game was neutralized. And when Penn State had to throw the football, they couldn't really find much success there. And I mean, your defense was on the field 
for 41 minutes. Pretty much 42 minutes. And when your defense is on the field for that long, of course they're going to get tired. They're going to get worn down. And it doesn't matter how much depth and how much talent you have on the bench. I mean, eventually everybody's going to end up getting drained. And this rushing attack for Penn State, I mean, it was non-existent. And on the other end for Michigan, I mean, the only thing they wanted to do was run the football. They love it. They love imposing their will against you. They love demoralizing you. You know, Michigan is one of those teams that they literally will run the football all game, every single play, if you let them. And if you're Penn State, you know your offense isn't that explosive. You know, I was a little bit disappointed with the play calling on Penn State's behalf. I felt like they could have been a little bit more creative. When you know that you're at a talent disadvantage, even if Penn State and James Franklin went into this game thinking that they had enough talent offensively, you have to be able to analyze the situation of the game and be able to make adjustments off the whim. Right after the first quarter, Penn State should have known that offensively, they didn't have enough talent to really be able to do enough or be effective against that Michigan defense. And they probably should have tried to be a little bit more creative and tried to try to scheme some more things up. But you know, in college football, there's only so much you can scheme up. There's only so much you can do to overcome a talent disadvantage. I mean, Penn State just, they hung in there for the first three quarters. But eventually, Michigan just kept knocking and knocking with that run game. And in the third quarter, Penn State's defense just absolutely fell apart. They couldn't do anything. It was just like a it was like a dam, right? It was like a leak. The dam had a small leak. And then people came to patch it up a little bit. But yet the leak came back. And this time the leak is just even bigger. And then they try to patch it up again. And then eventually, the leak just ends up breaking the whole entire dam down and things just fall through, the water's falling down, everything's falling apart, everything just comes crashing into the river. And that's kind of how this game was for Penn State. You know, the first three quarters, you were encouraged if you were a Penn State fan. You were saying, you know what, we're in this thing. And then especially when you got that pick six, you probably were thinking, oh, man, like this is what we needed going into halftime. And then Michigan counters. And then it's just like Penn State could never really get into control of this ball game. It seems like every time they tried to get some momentum, Michigan would just kick them down. And then in the third quarter, Michigan not only kicked them down, but they stood over them and kept them down. Michigan improves to 7-0 on the season. Their next three games are against Michigan State, Rutgers, Nebraska. And then after that, their last two games are Illinois and Ohio State. Penn State, 5-1, and one, their first loss of the year. Still a lot to play for, still not out of it. You got Minnesota coming off a loss against Illinois, Ohio State right after that. And then you go on the road to play Indiana. So for James Franklin, definitely was a disappointing result. Many, well, I'm not going to say many, but, you know, I kind of thought that Penn State would be able to keep this a little close. I definitely thought they would cover that six and a half, but that didn't happen Michigan is just a really good football team. And if you wanted to call Michigan the second or best team in the country, I wouldn't blame you. Now, me personally, I still don't think that they're better than Tennessee. You definitely got to put Tennessee up there right now for what they've done, especially getting a big win over Alabama. But Michigan, 
is playing some really good football right now. And I think the scary thing is that this defense is playing at their peak. This defense has hit their stride. This offense, I still think, hasn't hit their stride simply for the fact that I think that J.J. McCarthy still has a lot of things that he can show us in the passing game. I'm still waiting for him to have a game through the air where he just looks phenomenal. And he has had some pretty good games throwing the football, but I want to see him do it against Illinois or Ohio State. So let me know what you guys think about Michigan's blowout win over Penn State 41-17 down in the comment section down below.